Hello and welcome to the short tutorial on how to create a time-lapse video using ZBrush and After Effects. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how I use ZBrush to create time-lapse videos so that I can add them to my social media accounts so that people can see the time-lapse version, very short and quick time-lapse version of my sculpting skills. If you're interested in these types of videos, then please like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel where I'll have more of them in the future and also to my Patreon page where you'll get more exclusive content that I don't share on my YouTube channel. I'd like to thank all my supporters and my Patreons and with that, let's get straight into ZBrush. Okay, so <clears throat> inside of ZBrush, uh, I have just opened up the uh, Lightbox tool and added one of these male plane uh, head shapes. And uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to actually have some history on our model to actually create the time lapse width. So I'm going to start to sculpt something on here just to have some sort of history to play with uh, when creating the time lapse. Uh, so I shall return in one minute uh, once I've created something here. It's going to be quite quick. It's not going to take too long. I just want to have something to to show you how the time lapse works, basically. Okay, so I have now a head with uh, extra subtools because I wanted to show you how I record those as well. Uh, so if you just come in here, you can see you've got the head, the eyeballs, and the eyelids. Now, depending on your model, you'll have more items than this, but uh, just for this example, I'm going to leave it to uh, the head, eyeballs, and eyelids. So the next stage that I go through is to create a scale for my document so i'll come into documents up here and i know that i want a scale of 720 uh, width and on the height i want 1080 because this is a good size for instagram um to to add to your feed on instagram so once we've done that just get hit resize this little message comes up just say yes and then go to your keyboard hit Control n on the keyboard and then you want to scale it up like that. Now, because of the uh, scale of our document here, I just want to come over to the draw and just twitch it from horizontal to vertical. So it's a little flatter. And then I just want to sort of put this in the middle of this window uh, of this box here and find a good position to start recording the history. So once I'm happy with this position of our model, I'll just come over here to the draw or the document, sorry, go down to Z 
app link properties and I'm just going to save that cluster uh, one just there. So it's saving that uh, position. So if I ever accidentally move the cursor or move the model or rotate around the model, I could just come back to cluster. You can also uh, just turn it off, um, uh, turn on the lock camera and this will just lock your camera so you can't do anything with it. So the next thing to do is to set up your model. So what I like to do is come over here to the sub tools and these little paint brushes, they all turned off at the moment and that gives a grayed out version of the ones that aren't selected. So I would just like to turn them all on. You can either go in here and turn on all of these layers or you can hit, if I turn these off, you can hit shift and then hit that button, uh, the paintbrush button, and it will turn on all the layers. And I'll come over to the material tab because the gray material is not really that great to show off the detail um, of your model. So I'll just come in here. I'm just going to use the basic material. This one comes with ZBrush and it just gives us much better looking uh, results. And once I've done that, uh, I am actually ready to set up the time lapse. So uh, first thing I do is I'll just come over here to the movies uh, drop down and you'll see that you've got all these little tabs here that show you how to create uh, a movie inside of ZBrush. Uh, what we want to do is we want to make sure we've got the document window, a document, not the window and large. So if you had it on window, it's going to record all of the window. It's uh, adding the uh, boxes and the preferences and the brushes and all that sort of thing, all the window. But if you go to document itself, like I have here, it's only going to record what's inside the square document or rectangular document we've set up. And then, of course, you want it on large, you don't want it on medium. The large is better. Now, you can dock this to the side here. So if you go, if you double click on these little parts over here, the little divider, uh, and you can dock this over here so it doesn't sort of hide every time you try to um, change change a outcome or change a, a mod modifier or whatever. So if, if, we, if I just close this now and I come back here, you'll see if I open up image, title image, and then I try to open up, well, if I open up the modifier, sorry, and then I open up title image, it's just going to disappear and it's going to open up, but you have to come back in here every time. You can go do that uh, if you want, but it's easier if you dock it to the side here so that you can open up these uh, files, mod modifiers, and just do it through here. Now I like to work from bottom to top. So you come down to title image, you're just going to drop these to zero. If you have these on and you do the time lapse, it's going to fade in the ZBrush logo before it fades into the time lapse. And we don't want that. We want to keep this uh, as clean as possible, as clear as possible to modify later. So title image, we're going to drop those to zero. The overlay image, we want to drop that to zero as well. You can make a custom overlay image, but you don't really need it uh, for this part because you can do it later inside of After Effects or anything like that. Uh, overlay, magnify glass, I just leave these as it is. The time lapse track, I leave it as is. Uh, timeline, don't have to worry about that either. So I just leave it as is. And then the modifiers, now here's where we need to actually do some modifications. So. When you first open this up, it's going to look very generic. It's going to have all these basic basic settings that it comes with. And uh, this is all going to look wrong. Uh, if I just do a quick run through. So if I go to move, if I go to the top here and I just say uh, forward history. It's going to run through. And as you can see, the, mo the movement of the model is all over the place. It's trying to follow your brush strokes and and it's just sort of really messy and it's, it's, this actually gives people uh, a sickening feeling, I find, uh, kind of nausea, I, I find it anyway. Uh, so we want to, what we want to do is we want to cancel all this movement of following the brush and we just want to have a still model and the model appear uh, through the history once uh, you hit that button. So if we just hit the escape button and I go to the end again so i'm going to the end of my history so that i have the history 
to record. If you don't do that and you start recording from over here, it's only going to record from 265 and you're going to lose all that history of your model and all the brush strokes that you've created. So we don't want to do that. Again, our model is out of out of place in the uh, scene. So we're just going to documents, cluster one, and we'll bring it back to where it should be. Uh, before we go any further, it has recorded that video. So if we watch that video, so you can hit play a video, you can see it's recorded that little section that we created. And uh, what we want to do is we just want to delete that video because it's going to, it, what happens is it start, uh, if you record again, it's going to add that to the beginning and then the next recording will happen after that. So we want to delete that video completely. Uh, just come over here, just hit delete. You say save recording before uh, deleting, just say no, and then you're back to, back to a clean slate. So the settings here, it's pretty simple. What I do is I don't want any movement on the camera path. I don't want any orientation, size, position. I leave the frames as four and I turn the spin down to zero, uh, down to one, sorry, and spin cycles down to zero. I also don't want a cursor in there as well. So this little mouse cursor you can see on the model, I don't want that there. It's normally set to a sort of scale size, but I turn it down to zero and that's about it. After that, all you need to do is hit the F on the history and that will start recording the first part of your time lapse. So I'll just hit the uh, button now and you can see what happens. So once that is done, uh, you can then come over here and hit the play button. So you can hit play movie and you can see the time lapse video has been created. Now, I just hit escape there because we, we know what it looks like. Uh, if you have multiple sub tools, I'm just going to hit the delete on this one. On this video if you have multiple sub tools uh, it's i find it's better to record the video backwards rather than forwards because then you can take it into after effects or into a uh, video program editing program and just hit the reverse on the uh, video and it will then reverse the the time lapse so it looks like it's going from zero to one instead of one to zero so that's what I tend to do. So uh, for this, I will actually select the eyelids first. Come over here. Instead of hitting forward history, I'm going to hit back history. So I'm going to hit the back history now. And just wait for that to go through. And I'm going to hide the eyeballs or the eyelids, sorry, because we've already seen them. And then we hit the eyeballs and we're going to hit back history on that as well. Now I'm going to hide those ones and I'm going to hit the head and just hit back history on that as well. And that's going to reverse it going backwards. So once that is done, you'll see that we are now at the very beginning stage of what we had at the very beginning of this video. Now, there is one thing that I need to um, stipulate. Uh, be careful if you haven't saved your file and you haven't saved the history of your model, uh, this is a dangerous section to be in because if you do any changes or any marks onto your model or even turn on the paintbrush tool, you're gonna delete all that history and you won't get it back. So once I've finished recording and I've got to this stage, I tend to go all the way to the front again. So I hit all the way to the front of the history, turn on the eyeball, go to it, uh, select it on the sub tool, go to the end, turn on the eyeball uh, eyelids and do the exact same thing so that I know that my model is back to what it was before I started recording. So the next thing you do, once you've done that and you're happy with your uh, time lapse, is to export it. So. For this, I'm going to hit the uh, export highest quality. And then all you got to do is hit export. And then 
just navigate to where you want to save it. So I'm going to save it here under time lapse tutorial. Uh, and I'm just going to say 01 because I it's the first time lapse video. And I'll hit save. And then it's just going to run through the whole thing and export the video. And you can just wait until it's uh, all done. And it's all done. So now you can take it into uh, a video editing software. I'm going to use After Effects, so I'll see you in one second. So inside of After Effects, um, I'm not going to show you how to use After Effects. I just want to show you how I actually uh, reverse the video and then export it. So if I come in here, I'm just going to navigate to the time lapse tutorial that movie we created for the time lapse. Drop that into After Effects and I'm going to drop that into a new composition. So this is going to be a composition uh, that is the length of the time lapse. And it's not always going to be this length, uh, the time lapse. It could be longer or shorter but uh, what i like normally do first is uh, if it's a one with multiple sub tools i'll reverse it so if i go to time reverse now uh, you can see it reverses the time but it's still a little bit too slow for my liking and it's it's about one minute five six seconds so that's far too long for a time lapse uh, so what i'll do is i'll just come into the time uh, right click time and then hit time stretch and in here actually it's better if i do this before i time reverse so hit go go to time stretch and i want to change this to let's say 10 seconds just for now now that video is 10 seconds long and it's going to go very quickly, but remember, you're going to have multiple videos of time lapses of your model. It all depends on if you, you know, open up a scene later on uh, and you sculpt more later, or if you, oh, sorry, a tool and you sculpt more later, then you can export the time lapse and then uh, bring it into here and add that to the next, to the, to the same scene and then export it out. But as you can see now, oops, let me just time reverse this. So now you can see we've got ourselves a little time lapse video. And that's essentially all I do. Uh, I then render this out and uh, stick that into Instagram where people can see a much more collapsed version or shorter version of my sculpting skills. Uh, and it looks really cool when you put it to some music as well. Uh, and it's very it's a very quick way to show how well you can sculpt or your process of sculpting. Uh, I hope this video has been helpful for those who uh, really wanted to know how I create these time-lapse videos. Uh, I know it's been something people have been asking for for a long time, so uh, I hope this has sort of helped out a little bit in that regard. Uh, so yeah, thanks and uh, see you in a bit.